In today's session, we shall answer these questions. A density rod of mass that a test tube is floating vertically on the surface of... Coming up. A test tube is floating vertically on the surface of the water with 8 centimeters of its length immersed in water. However, in oil, the length of the tube immersed is 12 centimeters. What is the density of the oil and if the area of cross-section of the tube is 1.2 centimeters squared, what is the upthrust of the water? So to start off with that, we know that the relative density is given that we, we can find that by length that was immersed when the thing was in water, divide that by the length that was immersed when in this case we are dealing with oil. So what does that mean? The, the question is telling us that a test tube is floating vertically on the surface of water with 8 centimeters of, it length, of its length immersed in water. So it means that here it is 8 centimeters that is immersed in water. Divide that by uh, how much, however in oil the length of the tube immersed is 12 centimeters. So it is 8, divide that by the length immersed in oil is 12 centimeters. That is relative density. So what is the density of the oil? Of course now we first find the relative density of the oil. So definitely here the relative density of the oil here are these centimeters go with those centimeters by 2 4 by 2, 6 by 2, twice by 2 thirds. So we have 2 thirds as the relative density of the oil. Now that we know the relative density of oil we can go ahead and find the density of the oil. We can find the density of the oil by multiplying this de relative density by the density of water. So remember that still relative density is given by, by definition, the relative density is going to be equal to density of the oil, divide that by density of water. So meaning that if we want to find the density of oil, we make that the subject of the formula, the density of oil is given by the relative density of oil, multiply that by the density of water. In this case, the relative density of oil we got here as two thirds. Multiply that by the density of water. Now the density of water can either be a thousand kilograms per meters cubed, or we can express it as one gram per cc, depending on, on, on what units you want to use really. So le let's use grams per cc. So it means well, the density of water is going to be one gram per cc. And when you multiply that, we get two thirds uh, the grams per cc, and this is going to be the density of oil. Now here, I was using, I've used the density of water as one gram per cc, but you can still use the density of water as a thousand. In this case, the units will have to change. It can be a thousand kilograms per meters cubed, and so here the answer will be different, but it will be in kilograms per meter cubed. So it depends on the units of that you've been given in the question. For this case, we shall use grams per cc, so the density of water is one gram per cc. So that's first part of the question. So um, the next part is that if the area of cross section of the tube is 1.2 centimeters cubed, what is the upthrust of the water? Of course now when they're talking about upthrust of the water in this case, we are going to use, this principle says that when a body is partially or wholly immersed in a fluid, it's going to experience an upthrust. And that upthrust is experienced is equivalent to the weight of the fluid displaced. So we are going to use Archimedes principle to answer the next part of the question. So to answer that, we shall say that the upthrust force, the upthrust force that is going to be experienced by this test tube when it is floating in water is equivalent to the weight of the fluid that has been displaced. Now this, this statement is coming from Archimedes principle, like I had earlier said, that the upthrust force that is experienced by anything that is floating in water, it is equivalent to the weight of the fluid that has been displaced. So in this case, since the question wants, wants us to find the upthrust of the water, so in this case the upthrust is going to be given by the weight of the fluid displaced. Weight of the fluid is given by the mass of that fluid, multiply that by gravity. So what does this mean? It means that the mass of the fluid, uh, we do not have it directly in the question, but mass is still given by the density. Now the fluid we are talking about here is water, because the question is telling us that the thing is in water. So it means that it is the density of water, multiply that by 
the volume of the water multiply that by gravity so in this case the density of water we have the density of water here as one gram per cc multiply that by the volume of the water now the volume of the water is not directly given we are being told that this tube this is the tube yeah uh, the tube is uh, the area of cross section here a the area of cross section is 1.2 centimeters cubed and uh, definitely the area of cross section correspond that is the area of cross section and there's a certain length that was dipped in the water this is the water now from our question we are being told that when uh, the test tube is floating vertically in the surface of the water it is having 8 centimeters immersed so it means that this is 8 centimeters so for us to find the volume of the liquid that was displaced the volume of the liquid or the volume of the water that was displaced is equivalent to the volume of the test tube that was submerged and in this case the volume of the water that was submerged is given by the cross-sectional area of that test tube multiply that by the length of the tube that was submerged and in this case it's going to become the volume of the water that was submerged is the cross-sectional area which in this case 1.2 centimeter squared multiply that by the length that was submerged which is 8 so that is the volume of the water that was displaced multiply that by gravity and of course when you multiply that by gravity it is definitely 9.8 one meters per second squared now we are having an issue of units here uh, this is one gram okay let's rewrite this here this is going to be one uh, that is gram per centimeters cubed which we are calling cc or let me call it centimeters cubed multiply that by 1.2 now this is volume volume here was given by cross-sectional area though so this was 1.2 centimeters uh, squared multiply that by 8 centimeters so this is 8 this is the length of the tube that was immersed 8 centimeters and then you multiply that by 9.81 9.81 and this is meters per second squared so now if you look at the units we, since we are looking for up thrust we want our answer to be in newtons but you realize that uh, we are having centimeters cubed there's certain funny units that need to be eliminated so this centimeters cubed will go with that centimeter and that centimeter then what you remain with here is one gram multiply that by 1.2 times 8 times 9.81 meters per second squared now we need to convert these grams to kilograms so that our answer is in kilograms meters per second and one kilogram meter per second is equivalent to one newton so converting these two these grams to kilograms we divide this by a thousand so this becomes one times ten to the power negative three that is now in kilograms multiply that by 1.2 times 8 times 9.81 and this is in meters per second squared and then we shall end up with now for those of you who have not yet understood how the newtons comes remember up thrust is in newtons but one newton is equivalent to kilogram it's a kilogram meter per second kilograms meters per second gives us one newton this is coming from uh, the definition of Newton when you're trying to find uh, force we know that force is given by mass times acceleration and force is the SI unit for force is Newtons but these Newtons come from mass which is in kilograms multiply that by acceleration which is meters per second so mass which is kilograms times meters per second squared which is acceleration gives us a Newton which is kilograms meters per second giving us that as the answer a hydrometer floats in water with 72% of its volume submerged. The hydrometer floats in another liquid with 80% of its volume submerged. Find the relative density of the liquid. So we are looking here at the same hydrometer. Uh, at first, it is 
let's say that's the hydrometer right there it is submerged there and in another liquid now of course if they say that its volume is submerged it means that correspondingly even its length as in the, will also be submerged of the same in the same measure so meaning that if it is 72% of its volume submerged it means it's also 72% of its length has been submerged as well same with this so we know that the relative density of a liquid is given by from our previous sessions we this we derived where this is coming from that this is going to be given by the length that was submerged in water divide that by the length that was submerged in the liquid so in this case the length that was submerged in water the hydrometer floats in water and it is 72 percent that is submerged so this is going to become 0 0.72 that is 72 percent is 72 over 100 which is 0 0.72 divide that by the length that was submerged in the liquid which is 80 percent so in this case it is 0 0.8 and definitely when we divide those two our relative density in this case is going to become the relative density there is 0 0.9 a density rod of mass 30 grams and density 2 grams per cc has a uniform cross-sectional area of 3 centimeters squared in water when we dip it in water let's say this is it's in water when it is dipped in water it is going to float And when it floats the height above here yeah, in water it floats with a height of 1.5 centimeters above so when it floats it is 1.5 centimeters that is floating above then when it is dipped in another liquid in this case oil it floats with a height of 0 0.5 so here when it floats it the height that is floating on top is 0 0.5 centimeters and they are telling us to calculate the relative density of the oil so we are going to put the formula still that we were able to derive from our previous sessions. We said that relative density is given by the length of the hydrometer that is floating or that has been submerged in water. Divide that by the length that has been submerged in oil or in any liquid. In this case, the liquid is oil. Now you realize that this, according to this formula, we, we are dealing with the length of the hydrometer that has been submerged in water. Divide that by the length of the hydrometer that has been submerged and when we are dealing with length that has been submerged we are ideally dealing with this kind of length the length that has been submerged but our question is giving us the length that is floating on top so it means that and of course th that doesn't work so we need to get the length that has been submerged but for us to be get to get the length that has been submerged to be able to substitute here we need to first find the length of the whole hydrometer we find the length of the whole hydrometer when we get the length of the whole hydrometer we subtract it from that to get the length the corresponding lengths that have been submerged so uh, we have some information in the question that can help us find the length of the whole hydrometer we have we are being told that the length of the hydrometer okay in this case it's a density road okay so the length of the density road or the hydrometer the a density rod of mass 30 grams so let's go ahead and find that first of all it has a mass of the mass is 30 grams the mass of the hydrometer or let's call it the density rod the mass is 30 grams and its density so the density is 2 grams per cc 2 grams per cubic centimeters and it has a uniform cross-sectional area of 3 centimeters squared so it is having 3 centimeters uh, squared as its uniform cross-sectional area so to find the length of the entire road we shall we know that density is given by mass over volume now we know that we know uh, the, the density is given by 2 grams per cc so we know that it is 2 grams per cc is given by the mass which is 30 grams divide that by the volume we do not know the volume but since it's a density road like that and we know that this density road has a uniform cross-sectional area which has been given as 3 centimeters squared so meaning to find the volume volume is given by the cross-sectional area times the length of the density road area times length and from here we shall be able to find the length of the entire road 
so to, this is going to become 2 grams per cc is giving giving us 30 divide that by the cross sectional area which in this case is 3 times L so making L the subject of the formula we find that the length of this whole density rod is 5 centimeters so now after finding the length of the density rod as 5 centimeters so now we can go ahead and find the relative density of the oil the relative density of the oil the relative density of the oil is given by the length that is, has been submerged in water divide that by the length that has been submerged in oil so in this case this is going to become the length that has been submerged in water is the length of the whole road which in this case we got as 5 minus the length that is floating above which is 1.5 divide that by the length that has been submerged in oil which is so happens to be the length of the whole road minus the length that has been submerged which is 0 0.5 so here we shall end up with um, 3.5 divide that by 4.5 and we end up with our answer as 0 0.78 so 0 0.78 so happens to be the relative density of that oil.